there. First of all, I would like to apologise for how I sound, but I'm coming down with a cold, so I'm not actually very well physically now at the minute. Secondly, I'd like to apologise for the fact that my information in the order in which these programmes were put on Netflix might not be accurate because it is some time since I watched them, but um, my introduction to the Netflix version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, was with Jessica Jones. Now, I want to talk about um, Jessica Jones versus Daredevil. Yeah, I haven't seen the Iron First and I only just started watching the join up each show that has Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Daredevil and near Iron First whose real name I forget right now in it. Um I wanted to do this as kind of my opinion more of a, more than a review because I can't really review Daredevil because unfortunately I didn't really get into it. I found that the premise of a former hero being that became a private investigator who was suffering for, with PTSD due to um, how she was manipulated and mind controlled by um, the villain Kilgrave played by yeah, David Tennant who people will know from Doctor Who fame and other shows. I found that premise to be somewhat more interesting than a couple of young lawyers and um, a former client who became like their secretary or colleague, whatever. Um, even though the premise of Daredevil um, is kind of interesting, I think it was spoilt for me by the um, Daredevil film, um, which kind of underused how good Elektra's character could have been. I think that they may have been doing a better job with her in season two of Daredevil, but really we haven't seen all that much of her on Nim. Everybody who's ever seen the film of Daredevil knows how weird that Elektra Daredevil fight was in the film. It just, it was like, um, the scene in it where Pennywise does the weird dance and that kind of thing takes me out of the show. I haven't been able to concentrate on watching Daredevil whereas when I watched Jessica Jones I did watch all the episodes of season one and I did find her PTSD and the arc around how she got that and everything to be much more interesting and how she dealt with it, with her drinking and stuff like that, it just was a more interesting premise to me than Daredevil. I haven't heard a lot of good things about Iron Fist and I haven't seen the Luke Cage series. I have seen that a Punisher series is coming out and I do think it's interesting how they've used Punisher in um, Daredevil Season 2. But, uh, if I had to pick any of the Marvel Cinematic Universe shows to continue watching on Netflix, I think that I would probably pick Jessica Jones out of all of them, even though they are all in connected with the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe in the fact that they mentioned the incident that happened when the Avengers we're um, basically destroying New York, which obviously Hell's Kitchen is part of New York. And um, this is where Jessica Jones and Matt Murdock and Luke Cage all live. I don't think the guy who's Iron Fist lives in Hell's Kitchen, but the other three do and their associates do. So I personally, my opinion is just Jessica Jones is better. And since it's out for me, it was the first Marvel Cinematic Universe show that I watched on Netflix and probably the first one that was actually put on Netflix. I'm actually hoping for a season two. Um, ju just in the same way that I couldn't wait for a season two of Stranger Things and I can't wait for a season three and season four of Stranger Things and how I disagree 
that there were any weak episodes in season two of Stranger Things. I don't think there were any weak episodes in season one of Jessica Jones. I liked her relationships. I liked her best friend, um, who apparently is Hellcat. Um, I just found the overall premise to be a really interesting one and I'm hoping that they find some way of bringing Kilgrave back into Jessica Jones season 2. I'm not going to spoil what happened but I think loads of people by now what happened know what happened to David Tennant's character at the end of Jessica Jones season 1 to be honest. And I'm sure it's covered in The Defenders, but like I said, I'd only just started watching that. And it's hard to keep up with everything I've got to watch at home. I am first, I've got to watch Luke Cage to get all the connections. Um, because I didn't really pay all that much attention to Daredevil, I'm not in the right mindset at the moment to go back to watch the whole of Season 1 and start Season 2 again. Um, I know the basic premise was the bad guy was played by... Him, the guy from Law and Order, um, who was playing near the Kingpin near Fisk, um, but dude, that didn't really turn into that much of a villainous character. I think I'm gonna wait to see how Susan Sarandon is it Susan Sarandon? Well, whoever it is, what's in the Defenders, who's playing the villain in Defenders, and everything, um. I'm going to wait to see how that pans out, but it's very difficult if you're not watching shows in the sequence that they came out to actually follow. Um, it's like if you don't watch the Marvel Cinematic Universe films in the correct order, you miss things. So I'm going to attempt to try and get those, but my game laptop doesn't have a DVD drive in it now because it's a different laptop. So uh, I don't know how I'm going to watch it because I don't have a DVD player. And I'm not sure if they're all on Netflix, but that's just my opinion. If you like these kind of opinion reviews that I've been doing, this is my third one now, please give it a thumbs up in, in the like section. Please um, pass your opinion on what you think of Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage and the Defenders shows on Netflix. I'm obviously not sponsored by Netflix. I don't... Um, this is not an ad or spawn or anything. Um, I wish. Um, don't we all? But, uh, that's just what I think. Please leave a like, comment, share and um, if you haven't already please subscribe. I'll try to do some more of these opinion reviews um, in the future. Thank you. Goodbye.